you need to cut these things out of your life. And I'm talking about specific things you have and that you use every day. And I'm talking about things that you do every day. So I'm gonna be very specific in this video. Now, obviously you can completely ignore all of this. These are just things to consider, but number one is a doozy and it makes me sad, but disposable coffee cups from Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, your local coffee shop. I'm not saying never go there, but you could maybe limit this and here's why. Normal paper dissolves when it touches liquid, but disposable coffee cups never dissolve, even when it's full of hot coffee and tea. And it's because the inside is lined with plastic to prevent it from dissolving. You can even feel it when you touch the inside. And so when you add hot beverages to these cups, it slowly leaches plastic into the, the beverages that we're drinking. It's microplastics that you're drinking all the time. And so I'm not saying you can never go to Starbucks. Heck, I love Americanos from Starbucks, but I am going to maybe cut back a little bit and maybe even bring a different uh, mug that I could drink from instead. I don't even know if they would do that, but again, food for thought. Number two, and people aren't gonna like this one either, but speaking of coffee, if you could learn to cut out from adding sugar, milk, cream to your coffee and learn to drink it black, it would be so much healthier for you. And I'm not saying this whole video is about health, but black coffee has natural minerals and antioxidants that are really good for you. But as soon as you add sugar or milk or cream, it completely neutralizes it and you don't get at any added health benefits. Now, Studies continually come out about how good black coffee is for you. This one is from Harvard, and it shows that drinking black coffee reduces the risk of cardiovascular disease like heart attack, heart failure, stroke, type two diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease. Like it's crazy. And if you just hate black coffee, I have challenged some of my close friends to just try to drink it for two weeks. And at the end of the two weeks, they were converted. So I really think you guys could do it. Next we have gossip, negativity, bad people in your life. I, I know you're thinking of someone right now. I, and it's easier said than done to cut them out of your life. But if it is at all possible, you should do it. And really just focus on the people you love in your life, your family, your friends, the people that bring you joy and happiness. And so I want to do a huge shout out to StoryWorth for this portion of the video. I am teaming up with them. This would make such a good last minute gift idea. Truly hear me out. Or even if you're watching this after Christmas, oh my gosh, I love this. Okay. So story worth is a, a present that you can send to a loved one, like your, your, your parents, um, maybe your, your grandparents. Basically what it is, is story worth will email a question every week for one year to the loved one that you give this to. And they can just answer the question. They can even choose different questions to answer, but every week they answer a prompt and it's like about their life and, and their story. And at the end of the year, you get a full like bound book, black and white with like a color uh, photo on the front. And it's like up to 480 pages. Like it's a legit book about this person that you gifted it to. So can you imagine having stories and stories of your grandparents grandparents' life or your mom's life. That's, I want to gift it to my mom. She was telling me a childhood story the other day. And I don't know, like at some point, you know, she will get older and she will pass away. And wouldn't it be just wonderful to have a book of her life essentially? I, so anyway, uh, if you're interested in this, just consider it for anyone in your life. You could even do it and gift it to your kids even. Here are some example questions and they can pick and choose what they think they would wanna answer. But what was your mom like when you were a child? Did you have any pets growing up? What are some of your biggest pet peeves? What was your wedding like? And they can even upload photos. So I'm gonna have have them linked down below in the description box. And if you click on my link, you actually get $10 off the StoryWorth subscription. And again, you just email it to them. It, it's like a quick gift and it's such a perfect idea for this holiday season. Next, we have cutting out scary, violent, or even sad movies and shows. And I feel like all of my points, people are just really not liking, I'm sure, because a lot of people, they love their scary movies. Um, so many people are so sad though. They feel depressed and they wonder why. And I think a lot of it is the, the shows and movies we're consuming. We're watching very sad things, very scary, violent, twisted, evil things. And I think it affects us 
way more than we realize. Like we turn off the movie or the show and we continue on with our life, but it plants seeds in our in our brain. There's things we can't unsee. Uh, so anyway, if you just feel like you're, you're not feeling happy, but yet you are watching a lot of just not great television, you should try cutting it out for a while and see if anything changes. And while you're at it, you might as well cut out the news. And I'm not trying to be controversial or political here. I'm not even talking about that. But you have to you have to agree with me that the news you see on TV is completely one-sided. No matter what side you're on, they're only sharing one side of the story. And I just cannot stand that. And so I've completely cut out the news. But I do think it's important to still know what's going on. And so I try to find unbiased news outlets, which is so hard. But I have discovered this Instagram account. It's Real News No Bull. And I just really like them. I feel like they share relevant and you know important news stories just 100% unbiased. They just say, this is what happened and it keeps me up to date. And we're back to me being a weirdo, but you should cut out or stop charging your phone by your head when you're sleeping at night because so many of us do it. I used to do it as well. And again, you can completely ignore this, completely disagree with this, um, but this is just my opinion. But I recently purchased an EMF meter and I even shared it in a video. It's really interesting. You can take it around and see you know, what emits a lot of radiation. Um, cell phones are a huge one, laptops, Apple watches, microwaves. I mean, it just lights up when you go near these items. What I learned is when you actually plug something into charge it like your cell phone, it like triples in the amount of radiation that it's emitting. And so many of us are charging our phone right beside our head at night for hours on end every single night by our head in our brain. And so what I started doing is I still charge my phone at night, but I will do it across the room so that it's a lot farther away from me or I'll just do it in another room entirely. And it definitely takes some time to get used to, but I'm glad I'm doing it. Another thing that I have recently done with my phone is I have cut out all notifications that pop up on my phone. Okay, so this really helps with focus and it cuts out distraction. And I still wanna get text messages and I wanna get phone calls. Like those are like the important things, but no longer am I getting distracted by YouTube comments or Instagram comments or messages or just random notifications that you know apps automatically send. Just turn them all off. You should also try cutting out pointless meetings. I cannot be the only one that hates going to meetings, whether it be phone meetings, Zoom meetings, in-person meetings. I would not be exaggerating when I say 90% of them are a waste of time. And I'm so sorry if you're one that maybe leads a lot of meetings, but I feel like a lot of time is wasted. So sometimes I'll get emails from people saying, hey, let's jump on a phone call. Let's get, j jump on a Zoom call. And I'm like, can we just maybe like, what do you, what, what, like, what do you want to talk about? Like email me. And I, I have saved so much time by eliminating the majority of points pointless meetings. Sometimes they are necessary. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes they're absolutely necessary, but most of the time they're not. Cut out all paper clutter and it's a lot easier than you might think. And I'm talking about junk mail, catalogs, just throw them in the garbage. Uh, bank statements, just turn them off. Don't get them anymore. Everything's online. Instruction manuals, everything is online. I know you just got a new blender. Throw the instruction manual away because if by chance you do need it, all you do, and I'm talking like for your blender, your mixer, your refrigerator, your stove, you just Google the model number, which is on the, the appliance. Google that model number and the instruction manual is immediately there and you can scroll through, you can do a search and find exactly what you're looking for. You do not need to keep any of it. We're back to a couple of health things, don't hate me, but you should maybe also try to cut out plastic cutting boards. And this one also just rocked my world because it's so true though. Plastic cutting boards, you're, you're cutting, right? And every time you're cutting, you're cutting into the plastic and little bitty pit bits are kind of going right into the food that you're then scraping into your bowl. I have now switched to wooden cutting boards and wooden utensils. I just think it's a lot better. Again, you don't have to make all of these changes. I just think it's important to maybe be in the know, be aware, and then change what you think is important. Alcohol. Now this one could also be controversial and I'm not saying if you drink alcohol, you're a bad person. No, I'm just saying, I had an epiphany recently about alcohol. Now I have just never liked alcohol, so I don't really drink it. Josh used to drink it more, now he really doesn't ever. But my epiphany was 
when anybody drinks alcohol, their body immediately reacts to it. Like you get buzzed, you start to get drunk. You, your body is literally saying like, this isn't good, especially the next day. So many people feel horrible the next day after drinking alcohol. And it's literally your body saying, this is not good. Don't do this. And yet most people just think it's completely normal to always be drinking or even in social settings, which again, if it's here and there, whatever, if it's something that you're willing to cut back on, I think it'd be a good thing. I think you should also experiment with cutting out bleach from your home. And I know there's so many people that just love bleach because it is such a strong disinfectant, but that's the thing. It's so strong. It's so toxic. It's really just not a good chemical to have in our house and actually be continually smelling if you're just using it all the time. I mean, obviously if kids or pets get into it, it's really bad. Most of the time that doesn't happen though, but if you're always cleaning with it, there is that strong potent smell. It's very much linked to chronic respiratory issues. It affects our microbiome through our whole body. It affects our immune system. Um, and so I just personally choose to have different things like vinegar, baking soda, and that's worked just fine for me. Now, if you know me at all, you will know that I cut out sugar from my life 11 years ago. Now I'm not saying you need to cut out sugar, hear me out, but I do still eat fruits, ketchup, barbecue sauce. I mean, there's hidden sugar and everything, so I am not perfect, but I don't eat processed sugar from cakes, cookies, pies, brownies. I just have cut that out and I never even cheat, but I would rather you guys actually eat sugar than ever touch artificial sweetener. I think you should cut out artificial sweetener. And I'm talking about aspartame, sucralose, saccharin. It's so bad. There's so many bad health side effects, even long-term side effects. And what's interesting is everyone, you know, they kind of know aspartame is really bad. They have recently changed the name of aspartame to amino sweet to trick us. So when you're looking at the back of a package, you're like, oh yeah, it's good. Because you don't even know that that actually now means aspartame. So just FYI about that. I found that very, very interesting, but I hope you found this whole video interesting. Again, I will have StoryWorth linked down below. If you click my link, you can get $10 off a StoryWorth gift, such a perfect last minute gift. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.